This kitchen is currently under a renovation. In this two-part series, we're going to be installing a farmhouse sink and a butcher block countertop. It's a great way to make your renovations stand out. In this video, I'll install the farmhouse sink. I'll show you what you need to know to do it right. Farmhouse sinks can be mounted three different ways. Top mount sinks are the easiest to install. There's a flange that sits on the countertop just like a regular sink. They can be installed on any type of counter surface. Flush mount sinks sit even with the top of the counter. They typically require a solid surface or custom made laminate top. Undermount sinks sit completely underneath the counter. They require a waterproof top that is custom cut for the sink and faucet. We're going to be installing this Kohler Whitehaven cast iron sink. Farmhouse sinks are also available in stainless steel. Now one thing to know is these things are really heavy, so they're going to require some additional support. Now the plan for a project like this is to remove the old sink and countertop, prep the cabinet, install the new sink, and finish by installing new counters and faucet. If your new top is stone, a countertop installer is going to measure your cabinets and sink to create a custom top. Some installers are going to require a farmhouse sink to be installed before measuring. Have your faucet, soap dispenser, or any other accessories that need a hole drilled on site for them. It's also a good idea to ask the installer if there's anything you need to do to prepare for the installation. Now one of the great things about this Kohler sink is it doesn't require a custom cabinet like other farmhouse sinks with taller aprons. I just referenced the instructions online before I picked it up to make sure it would fit. Most instructions will include measurement requirements for your cabinet. In our case, we needed to measure the width of our cabinet, the distance from the top of the cabinet to the bottom of the drawer opening or screw holes to make sure it was shorter than the apron, and the distance from the top of the cabinet to the doors to make sure the apron wouldn't interfere with the doors. Now if your sink is near a corner, just make sure that adjacent doors, drawers, or dishwashers will clear the apron front. Now obviously your old sink's going to be removed, but it's a good idea to take a picture of your drain setup in case you need it for future reference. For a typical sink removal, turn off the water and disconnect the plumbing. Also remove the disposal. Remove the sink clips underneath, cut the sealant on top, and pull out the sink. Click the link for steps on sink removal. Now all our plumbing's at a good height for our sink install, but you might have to lower yours to clear the bottom of the sink basin. I've created this model to show you what you need to do. Now remember you're going to be working inside a cabinet, so you might want to call a pro. For PVC, mark your length and cut it with a hacksaw or PVC cutter. Then remove the burrs with 80 grit sandpaper outside the pipe and inside the pipe fitting. Just dry fit the PVC drain right now. You can secure it when the sink is in place. For copper pipes and water valves, we're going to use these push connect fittings. Cut the copper with a pipe cutter, secure it, spin it, and gradually tighten it until it cuts through. Deburr the pipe with a special tool. Then you can slide on the push connect fitting. Done. The next step is to remove the countertop. If it's screwed down, you can simply use a screw gun to back out the screws. However, if it's glued down, use an oscillating saw to get between the counter and the cabinet. Next, we're going to make sure that our cabinets are even and level. Use shims if needed to level the cabinets. With your countertops removed, next we can prep the cabinet. I'm going to remove the doors to make sure we don't damage them and to make access easier. Take off the false front drawers if you have them and remove any screws or brackets that might be in the way. Now our sink came with a template to cut out the front of our cabinet. Before I attach the template, I'm going to take some painter's tape and mask off the areas that are going to be cut so I don't splinter them with the saw. Next, we're going to mark the center of our cabinet for our template. We have a 36 inch cabinet, so we'll mark it at 18 inches. Then I'll line up the cutout template and tape it in place. We got lucky. The bottom of our template lined up perfect with the opening. Trace the template onto the cabinet. Then remove the template. Now cut the outline with a jigsaw or an oscillating saw. Sand it smooth if it's a little rough. Farmhouse sinks need extra supports on the inside of the cabinets because these things can be really heavy. Some can weigh over 300 pounds when full of water. 
Now you're going to want to make sure your sink top is even with the top of your cabinets so the countertops sit correctly. Some sinks can sit a little bit lower, but never higher. Measure the thickness of the sink and transfer that to the cabinet walls. Our instructions say the support should sit 5 eighths of an inch below the top. I'll use a straight edge to mark the line. Apply construction adhesive to the horizontal 2x4 supports, hold them in place, and secure them with screws. Then add vertical supports that extend to the base of the cabinet. You'll most likely need an extra set of hands to help set the sink. If it's a little low, use shims to raise it. Then double check the height. Now that our sink's in place, you can call your installers to install your new top. However, we're going to be installing a butcher block top. You can see the installation on the Lowe's YouTube channel.